CVS is removing some of the most common cough and cold medicines from its store shelves and will no longer sell them, a company spokesperson told CNBC on Thursday. The company's decision comes a month after a panel of advisors to the Food and Drug Administration unanimously determined that the main ingredient used in many popular over-the-counter cold and allergy medications doesn't actually work to clear up congested noses when taken orally. The FDA has not decided whether to ask drug manufacturers and retailers such as CVS to remove products containing oral phenylephrine, a nasal decongestant found in versions of drugs such as NyQuil, Benadryl, Sudafed and Mucinex, from the market. However, CVS is voluntarily removing certain cough and cold medicines that contain phenylephrine as the only active ingredient from stores. CVS is aware of the determination made by the FDA advisors and will follow directions from the agency to ensure that products sold at the company's stores comply with laws and regulations, the spokesperson said. They added that CVS stores will continue to offer other oral cough and cold products to meet patient needs. With laws and regulations, the spokesperson said. They added that CVS stores will continue to offer other oral cough and cold products to meet patient needs. Oral products that list phenylephrine as its only active ingredient include Sudafed PE, which is marketed by Johnson & Johnson's consumer health spin-off Kenview. Kenview declined to comment on CVS's decision. The Wall Street Journal first reported on CVS' decision Thursday. Pulling oral phenylephrine from the market entirely could affect CVS and other retail pharmacy chains, which rake in revenue from selling over-the-counter cold and allergy pills. Retail stores in the U.S. sold 242 million bottles of drugs containing phenylephrine last year, up 30 percent from 2021, according to data compiled by FDA staff. Those bottles generated $1.8 billion in sales last year, the data said. Without oral phenylephrine, patients will also likely be forced to seek out liquid and spray versions of the drugs or entirely new medications. The United Auto Workers Union is expanding its strike to a Stellantis plant in Michigan that produces Ram 1500 full-size pickup trucks, dealing another blow to the Detroit automakers as negotiations drag on. The new work stoppage includes roughly 6,800 workers at Stellantis Sterling Heights Assembly Plant in suburban Detroit, the union announced Monday after initiating the walkout. Currently, Stellantis has the worst proposal on the table regarding wage progression, temporary worker pay and conversion to full-time, cost of living adjustments, COLA, and more, the UAW said in a release. The walkout at the Sterling Heights plant brings the total number of UAW members on strike with the Detroit automakers to more than 40,000. It marks the first escalation in the union strike in nearly two weeks and the first new work stoppage at Stellantis in over a month. We've tried to do things the right way. We've taken our time, we've been patient with these companies. It's time to amp up the Pressure and SHAP just seemed like the the proper target at this time, UAW President Sean Fain said outside the plant on Monday, calling the facility Stellantis, moneymaker. Stellantis said Monday it was, outraged that the UAW has chosen to expand its strike action against the company, citing, a new, improved offer, made by Stellantis on Thursday, which included 23% wage increases, a nearly 50% increase in company contributions to retirement plans and other enhanced benefits following multiple conversations that appeared to be productive. We left the bargaining table expecting a counter-proposal, but have been waiting for one ever since, Stellantis said in an emailed statement. Our very strong offer would address member demands and provide immediate financial gains for our employees. Instead, the UAW has decided to cause further harm to the entire automotive industry as well as our local, state and national economies. The company said the strike will have long-lasting consequences, including loss of domestic market share to non-union competition, company profits, and profit-sharing bonuses for UAW members. Sterling Heights is one of the most important U.S. plants to Stellantis. 
however, the automaker is better poised to wait out a work stoppage at the truck plant than its crosstown rivals General Motors and Ford Motor, with a relatively healthy supply of Ram pickups ready to go, the company had a 114-day supply of the Ram 1500 pickup as of October 17, according to Cox Automotive, compared with GM's 100-day supply of the Chevrolet Silverado 1500 and Ford's 99-day supply of the F-150. The industry average is roughly 62 days, according to Cox. UAW Vice President Rich Boyer, who's leading the Stellantis negotiations, told CNBC on Monday there's been little movement by the company on key issues that he said discussions about the company potentially moving Ram 1500 production to Mexico as well as the future of Belvedere Assembly in Illinois, which Stellantis indefinitely idled earlier this year, remain unresolved, it was time. We've been sitting at the table long enough with not enough resolution, Boyer said regarding the walkout at the Sterling Heights facility. The unannounced walkout is the latest example of what Fain called a new phase of bargaining with the automakers in which the union would take a more aggressive tack. For several weeks since the targeted strikes began, on September 15, the UAW was pre-announcing strike locations, typically on Fridays, but on October 11 the union announced its first unexpected walkout at Ford's Kentucky truck plant, responsible for $25 billion in revenue annually, marking a major escalation in the ongoing negotiations, Fain on Friday said there was, more to be won, from the automakers. LaShawn English, UAW Regional Director overseeing the Sterling Heights facility for Stellantis believes the new strike should make the company come to the table with better economics for workers, this is a plant that's very profitable to the company. English told CNBC. I think this one will make them open their eyes a bit. Workers such as Randy Harvard marched alongside Fain, Boyer and other union leaders following the walkout, with chants such as, no bucks, no trucks. I'm with the president. We have to stick together, said Harvard, an auto worker of 29 years. It's a workers' revolt. It's not just us now. Everybody's on strike now, from the actors, all the way to the casino workers.